Oumuamua could not have been made by us because it was passing near us just for a few months very quickly, faster than any rocket that we can launch. Joe Rogan breaks the silence on recent UFO sightings. A profound mystery has captivated scientists and enthusiasts in the field of cosmic enigmas. A cosmic visitor has stunned us by speeding through our realm in a matter of months, defying the very limits of our technological prowess. It flew faster than any rocket we had, sliding between our fingers as we urgently try to catch up with it. Nonetheless, amid this perplexing enigma, Joe Rogan emerges as our guiding light, famous for his everlasting obsession with extraterrestrial phenomena. So let's see what he has to say. On his podcast, which is called The Joe Rogan Experience, Joe Rogan is famous for delving into some of the world's most thought-provoking subjects. His podcast attracts listeners because he has guests from a wide variety of fields, and as a result, it is always intriguing to watch. This time, the podcast host, who is 55 years old, discussed the most significant problem he has with the numerous encounters with UFOs. In his podcast, Joe Rogan has frequently addressed recent events in the news as well as reported sightings of extraterrestrial craft. Even after the United States of America shot down some UFOs, reportedly a few months ago, he made a post on social media about it. On this particular edition of the JRE podcast, UFO investigator and documentary director James Fox joined him and the presenter opened up about his primary concerns about the subject matter. The man who is 55 years old stated that the most significant concern he has with UFO sightings is his desire to ultimately discover whether or not aliens exist in the actual world. He explained, See, my number one problem always with these things, referring to UFOs, is that I want it to be true so badly that I worry that my rational and logical mind ignores all possibility of it being BS. Rogan thinks that a person may experience a decline in their capacity for rational thought if they believe in the existence of UFOs or aliens. There have been a significant number of reports of sightings that are false. On the other hand, James Fox suggested to Rogan that he pay attention to as many cases as possible in which people discuss having seen UFOs. Rogan agreed. In addition, Joe Rogan asserted during a prior episode that extraterrestrials can find solutions to the challenges that humans face. In another episode of JRE, Joe Rogan stated that in light of all issues that the global is dealing with at the present, humanity requires the assistance of aliens. He stated that we are going to need the aliens. Rogan continued by saying we need them to come down and they have to say, listen, you guys are just screwed. You're not going to be able to solve this problem. Stop. He thinks that extraterrestrial beings are deceiving us into thinking that they do not exist. But the truth is they are following our every move and keeping an eye on everything we do. Rogan implies that one of the goals of the operation is to make reports of extraterrestrial craft appear ridiculous. Being in constant contact with humans will prove beneficial to the extraterrestrials. On his $1 million podcast, Joe Rogan has had several guests in the past who have claimed to have personal experience with UFO sightings or encounters. These individuals hold a wide variety of titles from commanders in the armed forces to scientists and even academics in many fields. And it seems like these conversations will never come to an end. In the year 2004, David Fravor, a pilot with the United States Navy, took out for regular exercise and combat defense training off the coast of San Diego. According to what Fravor shared with Joe Rogan on a recent edition of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, he started getting information over the radio while the plane was in the air. Over the previous two weeks, the radar of the Navy had been collecting up mysterious objects. The objects would fall from far greater altitudes and finally they would no longer be visible on the screen. The investigation was given to Fravor, whose primary goal had been to participate in a standard training exercise with different marine divisions. He traveled further out over the ocean. His aircraft lacked any kind of weaponry. Soon after, Fravor noticed an aircraft that was shaped like a cross and was about 40 feet long. It was traveling back and forth above the ocean. Fravor believed that it was a helicopter, but he was unable to locate any rotors on it. Fravor began to circle the area in the hopes of getting a better vantage point. After that, to eliminate the threat, Fravor lowered the nose of his jet. The screen of Fravor was briefly obscured as the unknown aircraft flew over. After that, it was no longer there. Poof, said Fravor to Rogan. This occurrence is commonly referred to as the USS Nimitz incident. The incident came to the attention of the public in 2017 after infrared footage showing the aircraft appearing and disappearing on screen was made available to the general public. Since the occurrence was published by the New York Times as well, it can now be considered one of the most thoroughly investigated and documented sightings of an unexplained aerial aircraft. According to Fravor, there is no precedent for the speed at which the aircraft moved off the radar among the already available technology. To put it another way, if an aircraft that is hovering over water can move laterally at that speed, it is not an aircraft that the United States military has ever come across before. 
If you had something like that, said Fravor, it would change the way that people travel by air forever. More than the possibility of extraterrestrial life, what seems to pique Fravor's attention is this propulsion technology that would enable an airplane to move in the manner that he observed. It should come as no surprise that his discoveries and the radar footage have implications that go beyond the technology. My entire flying career is now defined by chasing this white tic tac, said Fravor, referring to the size of the image on his radar screen. Fravor disclosed to Rogan that ever since the publication of his account of the encounter, he has been getting unexpected phone calls and emails from a great number of people who want to talk about their own experiences with unidentified flying objects. Rogan observed that it's a subject that's so easy to mock. Skeptics of the incident point to several alternative explanations such as malfunctioning radar sensors and the likelihood that the aircraft crew came into contact with top-secret government equipment. When the New York Times published its article about the Flavor incident in 2017, which was 13 years after the event, it began the item by stating that earthly explanations often exist for such incidents and that the fact that they did not know the answer does not necessarily suggest that the event originated from another star system. Rogan, who has not one to shy away from disclosing his prejudices, stated at the outset of the show where he stood on the issue saying, I've gone on a trip with this UFO thing. I went from being a complete believer to being someone who had a great deal of skepticism, then from trying to be open-minded to becoming someone more of a believer than I have never been in the past. People in high-level military positions such as yourself are among those in whom I place my trust. According to Fravor, the Navy never investigated the occurrence. It wasn't a top-secret document. It was not requested of him to keep the event a secret. In response to the question of whether or not Fravor thought it to be an extraterrestrial life form, he merely stated that he had his doubts and that such a vast universe, our planet was the only one to have life on it. And if the craft was extraterrestrial, the pilot might say something like, I don't know what it is, but it was pretty frickin' impressive and I'd like to fly it. Travis Walton, a forestry worker from the United States, was supposedly kidnapped by aliens in 1975. Walton spoke to Joe Rogan about his experiences as an alien hostage in a JRE episode. When the 69-year-old returned to consciousness within the UFO, he said he felt wounded and on the verge of death. Walton continued by saying that he attempted to attack the animals and flee through a nearby doorway. I felt like I was going to die from the anguish and the thought that I was gravely injured. This was the main cause of the panic. When I finally saw these monsters, I became aggressive right away. I just started striking at them after grabbing something off the shelf there and from behind me. The only entryway I could see was on the opposite side of them, so I intended to assault more thoroughly by simply advancing past them. The aliens were characterized by Travis Walton's being large-eyed, hairless creatures. According to Walton, he never heard the aliens converse. The American went on to say that he had recently started to think that the creatures might be telepathic. So, what are your opinions regarding the bold and unconventional assertions made by Rogan? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. And that's all for the video today, but we'll be right back with more soon. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and thanks for watching.